frog rope climbing system is a sit-stand system that in its basic form uses two ascenders, an upper foot loop ascender and a chest ascender. A foot ascender may be optionally added and can improve efficiency on longer rope pitches or when hauling a heavy pack. The frog system is the standard ascending system used outside the U.S., but it is gaining in popularity domestically. It is not as efficient for climbing free hanging ropes as systems such as the rope walker or Mitchell, but it is more efficient at technical rope maneuvers such as changeovers, crossing knots, and crossing redirects or rebelays. It is also more compact and easier to wear while caving than most other systems. It works by shifting weight from one ascender to the other while advancing the unweighted ascender up the rope. Basic components of the frog system are a caver style seat harness with a D-shaped quick link, a chest ascender, a chest harness to hold the chest ascender in the right orientation, uh, an upper ascender, a foot loop ascender uh, with a foot loop, uh, and then a set of cow's tails. The seat harness used with a frog system should be a caving style harness with two loops that are designed to be used with a D or half moon style quick link. This provides a relatively low clip in point with the quick link lying flat against the body. This gives a central connection point that, unlike a carabiner, is rated for forces in multiple directions, which makes it suitable for use with cow's tails, descenders, and a chest ascender. Quick links may be made of stainless steel, carbon steel, or aluminum. Screw closure quick links must be installed with the opening facing down and to the caver's left. This way, when climbing a rope, there is less risk that the rope can open the screw closure. My preferred device is the Petzl Omni Triact, which has an auto-locking mechanism. This is much faster to install and reduces the risk of forgetting to screw the barrel closed or having it unscrewed while caving. Also attached to the D quick link are the chest ascender and cow's tails. The chest ascender, such as the Petzl Kroll, is designed to work with the D link and lie flat against the chest. Other types of ascenders will get twisted 90 degrees and won't work as efficiently. The chest ascender should be installed to the caver's right of the cow's tails to allow for easy opening and closing of the cam when the cow's tail is weighted. There are differences of opinion regarding where to install a descender. Some argue that nothing should ever be installed to the right of the chest ascender. However, I find that I never need to open the cam of the chest ascender when the descender is weighted, but I sometimes need to thread the rope through the descender when the chest ascender is weighted. I just find it easier if the descender is on the far right side of the D-link but this is personal preference. The chest ascender also requires a chest harness for proper alignment. This harness is not for life support purposes and may be very simple and lightweight. There are several styles available. Some people use a small quick link attached to the top of the chest ascender and then run the chest harness webbing through that, but the attachment in the top of most chest harnesses is designed to accept webbing. While climbing, there is enough outward force that the rope will not contact the webbing. There are two ways to pass the webbing through the hole in the top of the ascender. The ascender lies a little flatter against the chest if the webbing comes from behind on the right side and goes in front on the left side. The upper or foot loop ascender may have a handle or not. It is generally attached to the seat harness with the long cow's tail, though some people prefer a dedicated fixed tether. The foot loop then attaches to this upper ascender. Some cavers prefer the extra security of a locking carabiner between the long cow's tail and foot loop ascender, but since there should always be two points of contact with the rope while ascending, a non-locker is acceptable. Many cavers also prefer a fixed connection between the foot loop and upper ascender, but I prefer to use a carabiner. This allows the easy detachment of the foot loop which can be useful for crossing difficult hanging rebelays or other advanced situations like rescue pickoffs. There are a number of foot loops available, and most commercial foot loops are adjustable. It should be made from a very static material such as Spectra or Dyneema because this improves climbing efficiency. I prefer to tie my own foot loops from Titan Cord, which has the Dyneema core, and makes a foot loop that is light and low volume. I tie it to the proper length so there is no need for length adjustment. Some foot loops come with one large loop that can accommodate one or two feet, but the effective length of the foot loop changes depending on how many feet you place in the loop. I prefer foot loops with two independent loops, and I use a short length of vinyl tubing to help hold the loop open, which makes it easier to insert or remove a foot, and the tubing helps protect the cord from abrasion. This requires roughly 9 to 10 feet of cord. When standing in the foot loop, the foot loop ascender should be at the level just above the chest ascender. This will allow the maximum possible advancement with each sit-stand cycle. The cow's tails are generally made from one piece of rope with a central loop for connecting to the seat harness D-link. 
and two different length tails with carabiners on each end. The long cow's tail is generally used as a safety tether between the seat harness and foot loop ascender. The long cow's tail should be as long as possible while still being short enough to be reached if the foot loop ascender is weighted. Any longer than this, and it will be heavier than needed and more likely to catch on obstructions. Any shorter, and it may limit the distance gained from each sit-stand cycle. My preference is to use an alpine butterfly knot for the central loop due to its strength and relatively small size. I also prefer to use a barrel knot to connect the carabiners at the end of each tail. The barrel knot is strong and holds the carabiner in place, which makes clipping and unclipping more efficient. I have a strong preference for notchless, non-locking carabiners on my cow's tails. Locking carabiners can sometimes be difficult to get open in especially muddy situations. A low-profile notchless gate makes it easier to clip and unclip from bolt hangers, rope, or webbing, which speeds up certain technical maneuvers such as crossing rebelays. If tying your own cow's tails, they should be made from 9 to 11 mm dynamic rope rather than static rope. I use 9 mm for the reduced weight and bulk. The final piece of gear I'll discuss is the foot ascender. The most common and most imitated type is the Petzl Panton. This ascender is an optional addition to the frog system and does not provide life safety support. Some capers find that it improves body position and therefore improves climbing efficiency on free hanging ropes. It can also be helpful when climbing with a heavy camp pack tethered below. When climbing against a wall, it is also possible to use it in frog walking mode, where the feet can be raised alternately, as with a rope walker system. For more information on the frog ascending system, look for a separate video I'm preparing that reviews specific climbing techniques. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button. Subscribe if you aren't already, so you can learn about other videos on the subject of caving. And comment below to let me know how I'm doing, or to suggest other caving-related topics.